Full Moon Party is an all-night beach party on an island off of Thailand called Koh Panyang, and it is held the night of, before or after the full moon. It began in 1985 as a small beach rave and gained popularity through word of mouth. Party adventure by arriving in Koh Samui on the same day as the party. We flew with Bangkok Airways and the plane was very small and lightweight with propellers. The flight took one hour and it cost us around $120 Australian. But we did not stay on Koh Samui Island. We stayed on Koh Panyang where the beach party actually happens and I will explain why in a minute. The beach the party is held on in Koh Panyang is called Hadron Beach. We caught a speedboat to Koh Panyang Island, which took about 20 to 30 minutes and cost 800 baht each, or about $30 Australian. There is a transport service desk when you arrive in Koh Samui where you book this boat. You also have the option of taking a ferry, and the ferry takes around one hour. The boat operators will help you load your luggage onto the speedboat, and for their hard work, a small tip doesn't go astray. I recommend to anybody who is thinking about making this trip to get to the island at least one day before the full moon party or if you are getting there the same day to land on the island in the morning and not on the same day at five in the afternoon the late flight was suggested to us by our travel agent to the contrary of our request for a morning flight she suggested we may be able to do a few more things in Phuket that morning before our flight to Koh Samui but all we ended up doing was squeezing in one gym session eating breakfast and packing our bags. The reason why you would want to get a flight either on the day before or the same day in the morning is so you have time for any flight and travel delay, time to find your feet on new soil if you have never been there before, and also so you have time to fill your stomach or even take a nap before you embark on a night of drinking and dancing. The reason why you might want to go the day before is so you have time to do everything I just mentioned, but there are also pre-parties that happen on the island. The reason why we did not stay on Koh Samui Island and stayed on the party island instead was because we did not want to be traipsing back on a speedboat during the early hours of the morning with possibly intoxicated speedboat drivers. The drivers of the boats are known to party as hard as the tourists, although thinking back now, the taxi we took back from the party to the hotel was probably just as dangerous. If you stay near Hadron Beach where the party happens, you need to be extra careful to lock away your belongings in your hotel room. Theft is common during this time and many thieves are aware that tourists are away from their hotel room and attending the beach party. We stayed in a small villa called Coco Lily Villas in Wok Tum, which is about a 15 minute taxi ride to and from Hadron Beach. When we first arrived at the dock in Hadron Beach, they charged us around 300 baht to get from the dock to the hotel. We found out later that we were actually ripped off, and from then on, with the help of the people who owned the villas, we only paid around 100 to 150 baht each, each time we wanted to travel to the main beach which equals about four to five Australian dollars. The more of you going down to the beach, usually the cheaper they will make the fare for each person. And if you go in the high season, the cheaper it will be again. But we went in the low season, so it was slightly more expensive for us at this time. The people who own the Coco Lily Villas are a very kind, considerate and hospitable British couple. When one of us was sick and out of medication, they went down to the local shop for us and got some bits and pieces to help. They also greeted us with some beer and water to get our night started. There is a kitchen in the villas where you can make your own dinners and the cleaning lady will wash your dishes for you as well as do your laundry. The air conditioning in the villas is amazing and if you are looking at staying on the island and enjoy your creature comforts then I would suggest you make sure there is an aircon at the place you're staying. There is a nice clean pool at the Coco Lily Villas and some cute dogs to entertain you. At the villas, the minimum stay was two nuts and cost 6,000 baht per room, which is about $230 Australian or about $115 Australian per night. I think it's smart to stay further away from the beach to reduce theft as I mentioned before, but I also recommend Google mapping the place in which you're staying due to the fact that the nearest grocery shop was about 
a 30 to 40 minute walk from the Coco Lily Villas. If you hire a scooter, it would not matter too much, although we didn't hire a scooter, so we got caught out. In hindsight, it probably would have cost the same or even less to hire a scooter for the three days we stayed. That way, we would have also had more freedom to explore the island. You should bring all of your toiletries with you when coming to Koh Panyang. Make sure you are well stocked up on band-aids, sanitary items for the ladies, and medication in case you fall ill. Buying pharmaceutical items on Koh Panyang is very expensive. The small box of band-aids I purchased cost me 530 baht or about $20 Australian. The same box of band-aids back home would have been less than $4. So we got to the full moon party, along the way seeing people who are already heavily intoxicated, leaning out the taxis and chanting. The full moon party itself cost 100 baht to get in, so about $4 Australian. And you need to purchase a wristband for the party when you arrive at the dock at Koh Panyang. And then you need to show your wristband on the way in. I suggest when you arrive at the party, before you get any drinks or do anything, have a look around the venue and find a standout emergency meeting place. Somewhere where each person will remember to go, because not everyone may bring their phones. I didn't bring mine, partly because I didn't want to pay extra for data roaming or for a new SIM card. And of course, losing your friends in this type of situation would not be ideal. On the way, you'll see restaurants, stalls and market, people painting with UV paint, and any piece of fluoro clothing you want in any sort of colour. Em and I purchased some flower garlands for 100 baht each. So now onto the important stuff, bucket. If you're buying buckets, the price depends on what alcohol you want to drink and which stalls you purchase the buckets from. They all have different prices. I can't remember exactly what each price is for each type of spirit, but Em and I shared vodka buckets, and we paid between 200 and 500 baht for each bucket. If you don't drink a lot, like myself, I suggest sharing buckets is a good idea because you don't want to be so annihilated that you can't hold your own. Because remember, you are in Southeast Asia and even though you may be able to get treatment, you have to pay for it up front and their medical equipment and treatment may not be the same as in your country. So make sure you keep your wits about you. Only purchase buckets with sealed bottles. If you do not keep a good eye on the people mixing your drinks, they could potentially swap your sealed bottle for an unsealed concoction of cheaper spirits made by the Thai people. And that is the stuff that can make you sick and can also be fatal in some cases. If you are a guy, you will probably be offered drugs if you venture anywhere near the toilets that are down alleyways. Of course, we said no, and the people selling drugs did not bother us anymore or try to push anything on us. But often the people who are selling the drugs can also be the police themselves or the dealers notify the undercover police who are at the party to which patrons are the ones who purchase drugs from them. But unless you are looking for trouble or drugs, you'll be pretty safe at the party. I read somewhere that you should wear closed-in shoes to the beach to avoid being cut by any glass. So I wore some closed-in flats, although when we arrived, about 90% of the people were wearing thongs, and we even sat in the sand in some occasions, and I feel that stepping on glass is not as big of an issue as it's made out to be. I would recommend ladies carry a bum bag and not a handbag, or wear an outfit with pockets so nothing can be snatched from your hands. And I recommend that in said bum bag you bring the amount of cash you'll need for the night, plus some spare hidden cash in another pocket for emergencies, a photocopy of your passport just in case anyone wants to check your ID, some band-aids, some tissues or toilet paper, a small bottle of hand sanitizer, and anything else you think you might need, such as makeup, lip gloss, and all that fun stuff. I didn't bring my phone because I didn't feel like I needed it. I also didn't want it to get damaged or stolen, but I cleared the memory from my digital camera and brought that along and thought that if there was any chance I did get mugged, that it wouldn't matter if my camera was taken. I recommend bringing toilet paper because as the night gets later and the toilets get dirtier, the hygiene standards drop. And if you don't want to be stuck with nothing, you should bring some toilet paper. You can also help out other girls who haven't brought any toilet paper and may be struggling, as it's always nice to lend a helping hand. We also painted each other with UV paint rather than getting someone else to do it. I think it's more fun that way, and it costs about 50 baht each, or $2 Australian. As far as music goes, I had no idea what to expect, and I didn't even think to Google this before I went, but I was pleasantly surprised with the music selection 
and there are lots of different types of stages to dance to along the beach. My favourite of course being the drum and bass stage. When we arrived they were playing some old school jungle break and then mixed it up a bit later with some more jump up drum and bass tunes. There was also a psytrance stage which was amazing and there was an electro stage, an R&B stage and a more mainstream music stage. The government has been trying to get the full moon party banned for some time now due to noise pollution and I'm sure other types of pollution. But all in all we had a fantastic time and I would recommend attending the full moon party at least once in your life before it gets banned. Even if you don't drink, it's a very different music festival experience and everyone is there just to have a good time. There's bad people and troublemakers everywhere, even in your own town. So don't believe the media hype when they tell you it's a scary place where you can die because of course the media don't want you to have fun. Fear is an immense control mechanism pushed through the media about these sorts of parties. Live your life and live it freely. Things will only be as dangerous as you make them, your life will only be as hard as you make it and you're the only one that can put yourself in a bad situation. So have fun, live young and pass this on. I hope I've covered everything important you need to know before you embark on your full moon party adventure. Good luck and have fun.